victory. All the days of my life I pray. Don't you know that you to me, Baba? All the days of the Lord I pray. Everything I do, you came to die for me. Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi, Yam that I am. Ooh. I've searched around, there's no one that's like you. Lion of Judah, you are the mighty man in battle. Ah, yeah. God has given me victory. Ah, yeah. He has given me victory. Ah, yeah. God has given me victory. Ah, yeah. He has given me victory. Halle, 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 halle. Halle, halle, you're welcome to BBTV. This is BBTV Beatrice. How you all doing? How you all doing? I hope you're feeling well. Everybody's doing fine. Praise God. People are getting healed. We give up praise because the spirit of death has been sent to hell. Glory. Welcome to, to BBTV. Today we are going to be discuss, discussing horrible pasts. Horrible pasts. I just came to, to, you know, like I said on my first video that this channel is to encourage us, is to talk to most of us that feel that we are down, as if we are cast out. I have come to tell you that there's hope for you. I've come to tell you that there's, there's hope for you and there's, there's a plan of God for you. So today we're going to be discussing horrible pasts. What is, what is a horrible past? A horrible past is something that someone is not proud to talk about. Horrible past is someone is something that someone is not really, really proud to talk about, to tell people about, or whatever. But sometimes it's good after you have come out of that horrible past. It's good to share it with people that is stay into it and give them the way, you know, the way to come out of it. Okay? Because a lot of things that people go through, it's not that they really want to do it, or you know that they really want wanted. It's not the lot of things that people have been into. It's not because they really wanted to do it, but circumstances and situations, you know, led them to into it. So today I'm going to be discussing what do you do with your past? If your past is horrible, what do you do with your past? You know, what do you do with your past? If it's horrible, it's something you cannot tell someone about. What do you do with it? So today's today topic is horrible past. So let's go on with the discussion. What do you do with your past? Let's say you have come out of it. What do you do with it? You know, a lot of us are hurt. A lot of us, a lot of us go through a lot, or we went through a lot in the past, or we did a lot in the past, that sometimes when our mind reflects on it, it, it looks as if some of us should kill ourselves. It looks as if some of us should just harm ourselves. No, that is not the solution. That is not the solution. It's possible God allowed you to go through that path so you could talk to someone tomorrow. It's possible God allowed you to go through that past so you could encourage people tomorrow. It's possible God allow you to go through that past so you could, you know, teach people on how to come out of it, you know? So today, I just wanted to, I want to tell us a story. This story is about two persons, a guy and a lady. You know, this lady, the mother will be telling her, the life you're living is not right. I don't like the way you're doing. She should not be at home when the mom is cooking. She will not be at home when house chores are done. She's always outside doing, you know, doing, you know what youthful exuberance can, you know, can do. And uh, later on, she didn't take, she didn't adhere, she didn't listen to the advice of her mother. And at the end, she got married. God blessed her. She got married. And when she got married, she she now have children. She now found out, oh, so this is what my mother was telling me so this is what my father was warning me about now i have children now i have to face what my mother and my father faced you know because now that that fear in her oh what i did to my parents by not ad listening to their advice you know jumping from one place to another not staying in one place to learn to listen to advice now i am faced with the reality that is life whatever you try to run away from you will see it in front that's just the truth no matter how you try to cover it, it will definitely come out. So what am I saying today? That was how she got married. She, she started having fears, you know, fears for her children. Oh, what I did to my parents, 
I don't know if that's what my children will do to me. Because I didn't listen to my parents. So since I didn't listen to my parents, how do I bring up my children? You know, you know they say you cannot give, you cannot give what you don't have. That's the truth. Just imagine if she had listened to her parents, advising her, be at home, listen, stay in the kitchen when I'm cooking, like her mother, you know, her dad advising her. But she threw it to the air. And she's married now. She's finding it difficult to bring up her children. She's finding it difficult to advise her children because she didn't listen when it was her time. She didn't listen. Now she's living with regrets. So such a person that is living with regret, what do you do? You just need God, nothing more. Because whether we like it or not, the past always find its way of hurting us. That's the truth. The past always find its way of coming back to our thoughts, whether good or bad. So to them, like a guy also, the father was telling her, please, please, I want you to be focused. Plan, have decisions. Fourth, be focused. Get something doing. You know, if it's school, go to school. If it's something else you want to learn, learn. The guy too was you know, hostile and stubborn to the father. And he too also got married. <laughs> got married, had, had a wife, had children. And he found out that, oh, now nah, I'm a father. Now I have to go through what my father went through. Uh, you know, and he also started living regret. Oh, if I had known, I would have listened to my dad. I would have listened to him. I would have sat down under his teaching, under his wisdom. So how do we come out of such situations? How do we bring ourselves out of such horrible past? Out of horrible past, a lot of people have gone into things. I don't want to mention, you know, things. A lot of people have done things that they are not proud of. But you don't need to look down yourself. God created you for a reason. You are made for a purpose. So don't look down yourself. God has plans for you. Like I said, in the book of, I always quote this scripture, the book of Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, that God said the plans he has for us, they are of good and not of evil, to give us a bright future. A bright future. So today I'm going to be telling us about what do you do with your past? Or what, 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 does, what does your past, or what does our past do to our life? Number one is regrets. Past comes with regrets. Past comes with pains. Pains. If you remember the things you went through, the things you did in the past, it comes with regrets. It comes with pains. It comes with, you know, the bad decision you made in the past. And it comes with hurts. It, it comes to haunt you. Whether we like it or not, one way or the other, the things we did in the past comes to play in our minds again. And who does that? It's the work of the devil. Because the Bible says it's the devil that is the accuser of the brethren. Anytime you think back to your past, the devil is trying to remind you, I don't think you are righteous. <laughs> I don't think God has forgiven you. Remember what you did in the past. Remember that abortion you did in the past. Remember you jumping from one man in the past. Remember you going after people's husband in the past. Remember you doing such a thing, such a place, in such a place, in such a place in the past. You know, reminding you of your past that God has already forgiven. If you have, if you are born again, but if you are not born again and you are alive, you have opportunity. See, the only way a man cannot go to heaven is when he or she, a man or a woman cannot go to heaven. It's only when he or she denies Jesus. So if you are alive, you have hope. You have hope. You have hope to give your life to Jesus. You have hope to surrender that past to him. He's the only one who can forgive you. He's the only one who can pardon you. Because he shed his blood on the cross of Calvary for you. That is what he came to do. To do. So how do you handle your past? Like I say, I say uh, a past comes with regret. It comes with pains. It comes with bad decisions. And it haunts us. It does. Our past haunts us. So how do we cleanse ourselves, our conscience? Our thinking with our past. How do we purge ourselves from it? The only way it will, is to recognize Jesus, is to confess Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. That's the only way. Because if you go to tell a man your past or anybody, yes, it's good to confess your past. But if you go to tell a man, a man cannot help you. A man cannot cleanse you. He cannot encourage you. So who do you talk to? You take it to Jesus. You take it to him in prayer. Some people say, oh, I don't know how to pray. Prayer is very simple. You don't need to go to school to know how to pray. Just come to him. Lord Jesus, I'm sorry. This is what I did in the past. This is what I did in the past. Yes, you might not be able to say all what you did in the past. But he knows. He's just, he's just waiting for you to recognize him. You know, and accept him that he did die for you. And leave. let the past go. 
So what do you do? Jesus, when you accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, confess your past and say, Lord, this is what I did. Please forgive me. And sometimes some, of, some people that confess their past, even after God has forgiven them, the devil still come to haunt, haunt them with that past. And that is why he gave us what our past does to us. You know, four of it. Regret, pains, bad decisions, and, and haunt. It haunts us. It haunts our thoughts. Who brings that hunt is the devil because he's the accuser of the brethren. So today I'm going to be sharing with us from the book of Psalm 119, verse 11. Psalm 119, verse 11. It says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. The word of God is what helps you to know how to handle your past. Because that is what Jesus came to do. A lot of us are still weeping, crying, regretting. Oh, I did this. Oh, I did that. If you can just come to Jesus, if you can just tell him what you did, he's ready. He has even forgiven you. It's just for you to recognize it and confess it with your mouth. That's all. So the Bible said in the book of Psalm 119, verse 11, it said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. How do you avoid your past replaying again in your life? How do you avoid your past, you know, coming back again to your thoughts? How do you avoid your past or align the devil to play your past again in your, in your spirit or in your mind? It is hiding, bringing the word of God in your heart. As you study God's word, it stays with your spirit. As you study God's word, it shines light into your spirit. That is the only way we can get rid of our horrible pasts. So that is what I came to share with us today. You know, get engaged. When you get born again, you have confessed Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Get engaged in church, in a, in a Bible-believing church. You know, there are places that are not churches. I'm sorry to say, but it's the truth. You have to know. Even Jesus told us, anybody that comes and does not come in the name of Jesus, that Jesus is the Son of God, is not of God. The Bible says, well, from such, run. So if, if you have to go to a Bible-believing church, that's why we put it Bible-believing church. Then also choose your friends. Choose your friends. If you still have friends that when you were living, uh, you know, were living wrongly in the past, you still have them around you. I'm sorry. You're still going to live with that hurt. You're still going to live with those things. You're still going to see yourself repeating those mistakes you made in the past. So what do you do? Get rid of friends that are not there to really, you know, help you. Also, get rid of, you know, your friends. Some people think, ah, this person said he likes me, he wants to be my friend, so let's be friends. No, I'm sorry, I choose my friends. I choose people that want to be my friends. You don't allow your friends to choose you, you choose your friends. Because I'm sorry, it's not everybody that is supposed to be in your life. That's the truth. If you are not headed to where I'm going, I'm sorry, <laughs> you can't be in my path. So choose your friends. Don't allow your friends choose you. Choose your friends. And also the third um, point is have a standard. What's your standard? Your standard is almost the same thing as your value. What's your standard? What do you value? Do you value morality? Do you value discipline? What's your value? Keep to your value. Keep to your standard. So that's what was I just came to discuss with us today. Leave that past. Let it go. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Don't allow the enemy to suppress you with that past. But uh, remember I said, the only way to leave that past, the only way to overcome that past is to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. That's the only way. So I'm welcoming you to you, Jesus, today. Please receive him. He's there for you. No matter what you have done. No matter what you have done. I was listening to a story of a lady that gave her life to Christ. And she, she said, uh, she, she, she gave her life to Christ and she started confessing, talking to young ladies. And, and I was watching that confession, I was crying. She talked about how she, how many abortions she has done in life. I was crying. You know, that, that, that's, that's the past. But thank God, God has forgiven her. She has recognized Jesus as her personal Lord and Savior. And God has forgiven her. So you can do the same. No matter what you have done, no matter the horrible past you have, Jesus is here to forgive you. And that is what I just came to tell you today. Don't forget you are the best. God has good plans for you. You are the best. The best of all. The best of all. So live your life to the full by accepting Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. And you see how your, love, your life will take a new turn. Thank you so much for coming to watch this video. And I know as you watch and listen, your life will never remain the same. So what do you do? Take your past, drop it in the waste bin. Take your past, 
drop it in the waste bin. Take your past, drop it in the waste bin. Whatever you drop in the waste bin, you don't go back to pick it. So that's what you should do with your past. Thank you so much. Please, have you subscribed to this channel? Please subscribe, watch my videos, and like. Give a thumbs up, okay? Make comment too. All right? So have a blessed day. Stay in good health. May God give his angels charge over you. Remember, you are the best. Bye.